Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being the show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Walker. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I would think it's kind of interesting when I like, you know, crime dramas, even though, like, there actually was no crime mystery element to this episode, because it's just one of those episodes It's just kind of just about the drama aspect of the family element, but I just think it's kind of interesting to think about that, but... Tangents and all aside, I, th that is truly what this episode is about, family in many different um, aspects, because it is uh, Bonham and Adaby's, uh anniversary, and uh, Liam, uh, Cordell, Stella, and August want to do something nice for them, um, and obviously Bonham brings it up to Cordell, the best gift he can give her. Uh, give and make this day a great day for Abby is to try and convince Jerry to come because things haven't been quite right. She's been a little off kilter just because she's felt guilty about things like the way things have kind of turned out because she regrets keeping that secret. And um, Cordell actually tries to reach out to um, her, which Jerry's kind of conflicted about it because it's like, right, the Walker family will always be her family, especially because there's a the thing between, yeah, her and Walker aren't together again anymore, but. They, there is kind of a friendship thing there, which complicates things because which you're always like, for such a long time, you're like, oh, will they, won't they, and when they finally do, other uh, contributing factors have played a role, so, but Walker's like, right, I'm sorry how I handled the whole situation. I'm not trying to come between you and your family. Um, just know that you're obviously a part of ours, and it would mean a lot to my mom if you were there, and that's the complicated thing for Jerry is that she has these complicated feelings. Like, I get it. I understand um, I don't blame her for keeping that secret, but I'm still entitled to feel the way I am. So she is going to consider it whether or not she's going to actually show up or not. So, um, and at the same time, it's interesting how, uh, Cordo has to balance that. Cause I figured the Twyla thing, I didn't expect it to like, cause I brought it up last episode. I was like, Oh, are we going to see more Twyla? Oh, we definitely going to get a lot more Twyla. Like, uh, whether it should probably be a recurring character for maybe for the rest of the season, but I think that's fascinating because uh, Cordell shows up at her job because uh, her boss is getting on her because he assumes because of her past that she like transferred like like basically eight hundred dollars. But it turns out it was a clerical error on his part, and he just assumed the worst. And Walker's like, right, she's someone that the bad stuff she got mixed up in is because she met the wrong person and things snowball from there. She is someone that's been given a second chance and she wants to do whatever she can with that second chance and you're not good or you're not going to be willing to give her that one. And so you could tell Twyla was like really happy that, you know, her and Walker are on a better foot now, um, kind of putting their past behind them. But I think she appreciates having someone in her corner because she's kind of on her own, but to have someone in her corner like that backing her up. I think she also has Cassie too because they hit it off last episode. But having Cordell stick up for her like that, and it kind of plays into the episode of how, right, that now she recognizes all that time, even though he was playing a role of Duke, he really did get to know her. And maybe he had, you know, fabricated certain aspects about himself, but I do believe he was still genuinely who, who, who he was. So she probably feels like, right, she still got to know Cordell without really knowing Cordell because she met Duke. And it's like, right, you still spent that time actually getting to know me and actually care about me because... That's what made the whole Duke situation so complicated was his feelings of losing Emily and now like diving into this undercover stuff and actually legitimately having feelings for Twyla. It's just there was a flux of so many emotions going on at the same time. So later on, it kind of puts him in this awkward position where she's playing music. And he's like, right, there's kind of some memories associated with that because he's like, right, we're supposed to be having a fresh start. And I was like, oh, this is probably going to complicate things with Jerry, especially when Liam kind of points out. Right, she was with the Rodeo Kings, which are tied to um, Hoyt's death. It's like, right, she had nothing to do with that, but Jerry might not see that see things that way. Even saying uh, Abby might not see things that way either. So it's like, probably should tell them, but he's like, it doesn't, like, nothing's going on between him and Twyla, so he doesn't feel the need to really say anything. The moment that happens, I was like, yeah, that's another uh, another show without spoiling anything. Something else, uh, CW wise, is like yeah, it probably would have been better to kind of come clean about that because especially after everything that goes on this episode, it kind of well complicates things because Jerry actually shows up at the anniversary party and I actually thought it was so interesting when she brought it up to uh, Gail because Gail wants to spend more time to her. It's like right, share the family secret, which I even love that she's like right. Uh, funny enough. 
I, uh, you've been serving the, uh, ch our family chili at the, um, sidestep, and it's kind of been in the family the entire time without either one of us knowing that it kind of was passed down to the next generation and such. We did kind of get a little insight that things are a little awkward between her and Denise, because I think it's like, right, her and Denise have been on opposite sides with the whole Walker and Davidson situation. Now it's like, oh, after 30 years, you find out like, oh, I randomly had a sister I never knew about. Same thing for Jerry. So it's kind of still adjustment period. But Gail wanted to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with, um, with, Jerry, but Jerry says, like, right, it's um, Abby and Bond's uh, anniversary, and Gail gave her blessing, which she was like, you don't need it, but it's like, right, after everything that family's kind of been through lately, you deserve, uh, you should go there, like, they, they could use the win, they could, they could use you there, and she's like, I completely understand, and I love that Gail said something I was so surprised by, she said, I don't know why Abby kept quiet for all those years about you, but I do understand that Marv put her in an impossible situation. Don't let him do the same thing to you. And I was like, holy crap. And it kind of plays into what Jerry said, that Gail isn't the person they make her out to be. And I think that's the thing. Because I was like, man, I didn't... And I think the show does that on purpose. Kind of make you a little suspicious of Gail. And not Because you can tell like how vindictive she kind of is. How it kind of rubs you the wrong way the entire time. How she rubs you the wrong Just the Davidsons in general. Because you're Team Walker all the way. And now it kind of makes you put her in a different light. Because it's also because she doesn't hold as much of a grudge. There's still the whole her and Abby thing. She said that... Because the question is, is she saying that just to appease Jerry? Because she knows how important they are to Jerry. So it's like, right, I don't want to seem like I'm monetizing you all to myself uh, monopolizing is the word i'm trying to say monopolizing you just to myself it's like right i am i understand for years and years long before we became your family they were your family so regardless of my issues with them because our main issue now is just abby because of the whole thing but i think she's waning past that the fact that she could even come at it from that perspective of uh, saying that marv put her in an impossible position what i thought was interesting but also her biggest grudge against that family was because she blamed Cordell for Marv's death, and now she knows he had nothing to do with it, that it, it kind of clears at least some of that animosity between the families. It was it's always going to be there to some extent. The it's going to be complicated, but it's not nearly... Well, it's complicated in its own regards, but I don't think it's going to be as nearly complicated as it was before. So I thought that was dope, Jerry showing up there. Um... And I thought it was beautiful the speech that um, Abby gave, saying that it was it wasn't just like fate. Yeah, fate kind of brought them together. So you know, circumstances led them to meeting each other because once again she was engaged to Marv at the time. But despite fate playing its role, um, it is a choice that they choose each other every day. So it isn't just about fate. And I thought that was such a beautiful sentiment, especially because earlier, once again, something else CW wise kind of brought up the whole conversation about fate. Uh, fate is just kind of like, you kind of make it happen. It's not like, oh, like you have to be in the right place at the right time. The right circumstances have to come up to put you together. So it's kind of a, it just that perspective from that show and this, uh, you know, that was something that came up in Naomi and I thought was kind of interesting um, this perspective on it. And I thought it was just beautiful. And then Bonham, um, getting on the guitar and singing. Like, I was like, did we know that Bonham could play the guitar and all that? But still, it was, it was this beautiful moment. It's just almost like this, yeah, when, um, he grabs her and just kind of tilts her and kisses her. It's, it's very beautiful because, you know, uh, Cordell was talking about how lucky that, um, he considers himself Liam and, um, Liam, uh, August, and Stella all are to have, you know, Abby and Bond as parent, both parents and grandparents. Uh, I also love that Abby had talked about the fact is that it is, a, a you know, the whole aspect of choosing that it's this family isn't, you know, uprooted. This family is thriving because it's not just them. It's like, look at all the people around us. Once I keep comparing to other stuff, especially CW wise, but it's just, it's, it's very typical how like a lot of shows have like had these themes throughout the week that kind of converge on this as well, where it's like, there's a conversation about community in Kung Fu. And we kind of see that in this regard too. So I just think it, it was a beautiful thing and everyone being there to celebrate, I thought was kind of neat. And, um, Kind of finishing up, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and finish up my thoughts about the whole Twilight thing. Because the, the moment, like, because 
Walker and Jerry, well, you know, Cordell and Jerry talk about the fact is that, um, and she even says this to Abby that just as much as she's a Davidson, she's just as much of a Walker. So she's going to choose both families. I think for her, it was going to be a, it was a conversation about whether or not she could actually make that happen. But she's making that decision too. Granted, seeing Walker together with Twyla, the conversation is I don't know if she recognized that was Twyla from behind or not, but. It you know it's like right they're submitting being friends but I think maybe there's a complicated thing of if she recognized Twyla is going to rub her the wrong way uh, especially because like right she's choosing the Walker family and now just like maybe she feels like oh you're moving on so quickly which isn't necessarily the case but it's tiptoeing in that direction especially because her and him and uh, Jerry decided to just go back to being friends but now that it kind of opened that box it's going to probably be a little harder to like close at. I, I, I've I've only had one... It was never, like, anything... Nothing happened, so maybe that probably helps. But I've, I've caught feelings for, like, someone that I was friends with for years. It was, like, an on-and-off thing of, like, I would catch feelings for... They, they would resurface every once in a while. So I've, I've only maintained one friendship through that. Like, ch shifting over into, like, something more kind of makes it hard for me to ever have, like, a... You know, I'm not friends with my exes, so, like... Walker and her have so much history, so it's kind of similar to my circumstance of this friendship I had, where it's like, oh, like, one of my friends, I, like, kind of fell for her in regards, but once again, there were kind of mutual feelings, but nothing ever really happened, and we're just good friends today, so it just, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit, um, but it's like, it, their circumstances are a little more complicated, so I'm like, like I said, I don't know what what's rubbing her more like, oh, it's almost like you're moving on already because I still do have feelings for you despite everything being complicated or is it specifically because it's Twyla, combination of the two. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where things kind of go on that front. And, you know, wrapping things up, well, not wrapping up, but uh, with the Walker situation too, continuing, there's the Stella um, and uh, August situation of, yeah, both of their love lives are complicated. August, uh, all this love and you know, beautiful relationships kind of sours is a little soured because it's like, right, I, I'm kind of, you know, the whole him and Faith thing didn't work out. And Stella's in this kind of love triangle situation. And it's not just that. She's also trying to figure out what her future holds. It's like, do I stay here? Do I go off to the college I've kind of been accepted into? Colton, Todd, who do I choose? And so she was going to wait for like the universe to give her a sign. But hearing the way Abby talked about fate and how she it's like, right, fate has kind of put these opportunities in front of me. But at the end of the day, it's up to me. I have to make the choice. So she does not quite sure where she's going to choose, but she wants what her grandparents have. And she's telling August that he most likely will have that too someday. So something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go on that front. But another element to this episode is we get introduced to uh, Cassie's brother, Ben. Kind of love that whole thing with that wine guy. She's like, oh, like making a whole point. I'm not even sure what movie she's referencing. I don't, once again, I'm not the movie dude. Uh, but she was referencing, he's like, she's like, whoa, really? You just bought all that? Like, I'm referencing a movie. You haven't seen this movie? Because uh, she referenced it. It's something that Paul Giamatti's in. Uh, I thought was kind of interesting, but... So, but it turns out her and Ben have issues, and Ben kind of didn't want to be around her, and Cordell wanted to kind of help out, but Liam was like, no, no, let me handle it, and because Liam has that perspective of, especially like an older brother circumstance of, yeah, kind of having issues with your older brother, because um, he talks about like, right, when Emily died, my brother kind of just disappeared, and I went to, as far as going to like him when he was undercover, let's not forget, Liam did do that, and that potentially threatened the whole investigation to some extent, but how he kind of put himself on, got himself kind of put on the case and such, but Liam was kind of worried that things were going to be bad, but where him and Walker are, yeah, they've had still had some bumps in a row, but they definitely come back together and they're stronger than ever. And so Liam, you know, doesn't want to know all the circumstance. Like he doesn't want to push uh, her to uh, Cassie to tell all the circumstances. So he wants her to, you know, try and repair things with her brother because if you don't, it is going to be that thing of as the longer things get, the worse it's going to be to try and pull things back. And Liam probably thought at one point in time worried that like maybe things between him and his brother would never get better. And look where they are now. So Cassie took that advice and tried to reach out to her brother. And we kind of find out little hints here and there about what went wrong. And it turns out his boyfriend 
uh, Lucas was sick. We find out later, was it um, Huntington's disease? Um, and he died, and she wasn't there, and that's what pissed him off. She, she was, because <clears throat> part of me was thinking like, oh, could it be the Miles thing of it? I was like, she's not going to get any slack on that part, but it's like, right, he was part of our family. He was my boyfriend for 10 years, so he was just as much part of the family, and I think it also rubbed him the wrong way that it's like, oh, uh, she's there on behalf of another family. It's like, cool, you couldn't be there for me, your actual blood family, and oh, here you are going to help another family. Right, you're very good at helping family, aren't you? So he was kind of throwing a lot of shade her way, but I thought, it was like, oh, it's kind of unfair because she was kind of dealing with the whole Miles thing, but that's also his point. It's like, right, I get it, but you kind of cut ties him and you sent post cards and stuff and she really kind of opened up about why you know it is she was running away from it because she kind of distracted herself with other stuff because she didn't want to have to accept seeing lucas in such a state that he would kind of with it and even ben said that he'd asked at the end where were you asking what was going on but he was so out of it i didn't have to worry about necessarily breaking his heart by telling him like you know not even having to lie to him like i didn't have any way of really explaining everything and she regrets it there's nothing she can do to turn back time um and at first he was like right you're trying to compare your partnership with someone for like a couple months i'm like i think that's a little unfair because it seemed like there was more going on between them than just a partnership but i think it's still the thing of yeah even so it was still it's still someone she was intimate with that disappeared maybe once again i'm unclear on, no because nothing ever i was like no nothing ever happened i forgot i thought it was like I, I guess in my head i kept thinking from the beginning she had feelings for miles because i don't know if at the time we knew he was married maybe Maybe we did, and I just didn't remember that at the time. We didn't find, we, you know, obviously met his uh, wife like two episodes ago or something like that. But regardless, I, I, so, but it's, it's more so like, no, he's all, he was also family, but it's, uh, you know, the, uh, a partner, um, like Ranger wise is a little bit of a different circumstances. It's like you kind of go, your, your partners and you're going to battle together, you got each other's back. It's, it's a very unique dynamic. And so, but for her, what she was saying is it was just an amalgamation of everything, everything that Lucas was going through. And with Miles, it was at least something she could fix. It's like, if I can find him, it, it's at least something I can do to kind of distract herself. But also, like, it's something I can actually fix. Lucas, I, I, there was no there was no saving. There was nothing she could do. And if she went there, she would have felt helpless. At least this way, she feels like I can I can do something. You know, it doesn't make up for not being there for him in the long run but you know it, it did at the very least bring her and her brother together which uh seems like liam decided to kind of make a move i was wondering like i guess like him and brett never really like ever got back together together so i guess they just kind of i was maybe that's something they just kind of slid under the radar but i was like i was kind of under the impression like they were getting back together but i think it's just a thing of well because they were still i guess it just never worked out but I was kind of under the impression, like, oh, yeah, like, they were still tiptoeing back towards that. But I guess it was just kind of like a, yeah, our history and everything, but we're just still going to be good friends and work together type of thing. Like, kind of put their history aside. Kind of almost like the Twilight and um, Walker situation. Nevertheless, um, asking Ben out and even Cassie kind of giving her blessings. So, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where things kind of go from there. I can only assume that means we're going to be seeing a lot more of Ben. And I think that's a good thing because that way Cassie's able to kind of repair things with her brother. So once again, just a family filled episode, a lot of interesting developments. I'm curious to see where the, the next episode takes us with this. We'll be taking a little bit of a break. Uh, Walker will be coming back on June 2nd. So do keep that in mind. Um, I'm curious. I haven't read too much into it, but I'm wondering if there's some correlation because, like, I'm, maybe they're just spacing it out like that because I know, you know, thankfully he's okay, but I, I, I read just little bits of it. I kind of didn't want to read too much, but I think uh, Jared Padalecki was in a car accident fairly recently. I was like, was it like last week or something? Um, that was, it was, I think it was pretty bad, and I heard that he was recovering. Like, once again, I didn't read into it too much. I just saw some of the headlines. So. I don't know if there's any correlation there or whether it's just a situation of they naturally were going to take this break and just just to give them some buffer time for him to recover because I don't know if they finished filming the entire season. Once again, my understanding is most, I think most CW stuff films five episodes out. I don't know if that's always the case for um, most tele television, but we'll ultimately have to wait and see uh, where all of this ends up taking us going forward um 
uh, when this show returns regardless. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good night.